Hello, my name is Bruce from Elam.org and Risk Management Framework. And today I want to talk to you about categorization of your system. So this is in regards to the Risk Management Framework process. And this is just an introductory of the first step that you use in the Risk Management Framework process. Now we're not going to be talking about national security systems. We'll save that for another video. We're going to just talk about just a normal federal system that's using Risk Management Framework so that means we're not going to be using the CNSS 1253 for national security systems. We're just going to stick with normal risk management framework. This is all FIPS 199 stuff. The question is, how do we actually determine what security categorization to give a system? In our last video, we talked about an example of a web server. We had system A and we called it webserver.public. So let's take this system. Now, we already established that this was a low system, low impact level system. So why is it low impact? Well, let's look at this. One of the first things you do with the system when you're determining what categorization that it needs is you look at the actual information type. So to learn more about information types, you can just go to 800-60 and it'll tell you all kinds of other uh, information types. But for the purposes of this, we're going to use two information types. One is public information and the other is administrative information. Let's look at the public information type first. So with public information type for our web server, we already know that we're serving out information. So this is publicly available information to the world to our enemies, to our opponents, to everyone, our competitors, to our customers, everyone. So now we have to get this data. We know what kind of data it is. Let's say that the data is um, we, we advertise a job for custodians to clean um, all over the country. And we, we put that information out there so we can get um, custodial professionals to come in and, and work for us. So there's no classified information or anything. It's just telling the description of the job and what we're looking for. So that being said, what kind of information is this? If we look at our security objectives, we have to look at the confidentiality, the integrity, and availability of, of this kind of publicly available information. So confidentiality, that means how much of the system do we want to hide? And would it hurt us to put this information out there? Well, no, because it's a publicly available system. So actually, the security objective confidentiality is actually not applicable because we're not hiding any, any of this kind of information because it's public. Now, let's go to integrity. Let's say that someone was to fat finger some of the information so that some of there are some misspellings or even worse. Let's say that the data actually got corrupt and you go on there and it looks uh, like random uh, letters and, and uh, numbers. Well, that's going to affect the integrity of our, of our system now. Is that going to impact our organization if you can no longer access that data? Or if, you, if the customer goes to the site and they see just a bunch of uh, random letters, they can't read it. Well, yeah, it does affect our organization if they can't read the publicly available information that we're trying to disseminate. So it, what kind of impact, though? It's just a web server. And it's publicly available, and let's say we have a backup system. So the impact to our organization is actually low. If that system has corrupt data, we'll just stand up our next system. Now let's look at the other security objective of availability. Of course we want our information to be disseminated and available to our customers and to everyone in the world. So, But what's the impact if you can't um, access that data. Let's say that there's a denial of service attack or even worse, there's a cataclysmic a disaster and we lose the server entirely and nobody can get to it. Um, what's the impact to our organization? Well, that's not our main business so it's just disseminating information so the impact of our organization is low, still low. So the overall security categorization of our system is low because the highest level, the highest watermark on this is low. So that's how you determine how a system is low, moderate, or high. Now, let's take it a step further. We said that there's not just one type of data on there, public, but there's also administrative data on that web server. What does that mean? Well, somebody has to actually administer this web server, right? So we need a, um, a webmaster to go in the back end and maybe put the graphics in there and actually put the data in there. Maybe he blogs a little bit. Maybe we have 
people that can log in and use their username and password to go ahead and uh, see, uh, put their resume out there, or something like that. So there's no information that's going to be damaging if it got out to the wrong people. But if somebody got it and disseminated that information and then they can get into our web server and we lost the web server or they went on there and start messing around with it or made more administrator passwords or something and gave them out to all their friends, would that harm us? Well, yeah, it would. However, it's a low impact to our organization because we already established it. If we lose this web server, it's a low impact. We have another one we can stand up. We can remove all of those username and passwords and start from scratch. So the administrative information type is still low. And then it's the same thing with integrity and it's the same thing with availability. We do want it to have uh, a level of integrity so that you can still use your password because if the password username gets corrupt of course you can't you can't log in there and then if you don't have availability to those passwords you can't for example use your forgot password and it's just it's just not available then of course that's bad you can't get onto it but the impact is still low because the overall system um, security categorization is low for this web server now let's contrast that with a system that's more important let's say we have a system that has a satcom and it has satellite information that's taking information from all over the world and it's telling all of these secret locations that we have and it's pinpointing all of our agents all over the world and of course the data on this system is actually going to be confidential because we don't want that getting into the hands of the wrong people of our opponents or or our competitors it could be damaging to our not maybe not even our whole organization, but to the people that are that it's gonna uh, tell where their locations are. Maybe it'll they'll get them killed. So you're talking about the confidentiality on a system like that is high. So that automatically makes everything else on the overall system high. Now maybe you don't care so much about the information getting corrupt, so maybe that's low. But the availability maybe that's also low. But the whole overall system is going to be at the highest watermark is going to be high. So we talked about one of the main standout features of the categorization process. But one thing that people don't normally talk about is another task that you have to do when you're talking about categorization of a risk management framework process is system description. You have to put a system description together so that you describe all the components of your system and how they all work together. So for example, we could say this is a web server that's built on Red Hat Linux uh, Enterprise and the back end of it is built with MySQL and that MySQL system is attached to a network attached storage area and then we go on to describe the network architecture if there was any and everything else that goes with it. That's the network the system description. We describe the functionality of the system. Maybe we say that there's a limited login um, ability for the system and all we want to do is disseminate information. So the system description is very important for this categorization process. And the reason why it's very important is because we also have to register the system. That's like the third major task that you have to do. So registering the system means advertising that you have this new system that has to be used for the organization. So you want to put the name out there. Our name is web server uh, dot public 2.0 the version's 2.0 let's say and here the description is that it's a web server that is built on Red Hat Linux and it has a MySQL database and it's attached to a network set storage area and it has limited functionality allowing people to come in and, and log into the system and whatever so that's our description now we need the description in order to tell everyone what this server does because that is registering the system now Normally, organizations have some method of registering the system. Just to give you a specific example of how this works, the Department of Defense has something called uh, EMAS. So when you register the system, you put the name, the description, and the version, and everything else in EMAS. And then once you hit submit, it actually gets advertised to everyone, to higher level folks. So for the Department of Defense, it'll normally go to something like Cyber Command. 
and Cyber Command is then sees that there's this new system that's coming out and that it's going to be maybe the project is due in the first quarter of the next year or something like that. So that's registering the system and that's why it's important to have the categorization of your system, the description of your system in the categorization of the system.